you came to Thailand at 19 years old with 574 euro to your name. That's about $600. We were so focused on building the biggest, most beautiful nightlife platform there is. Hey folks, how's it going? What's the story? Pete here from Tyrish Times. We got another one for you today, right here, just finishing up the edit of an interview with a gentleman named Friso, who, as you just heard, arrived in Bangkok with $600 to his name. 12 years later, he's still there. He's had a string of different businesses. Very interesting guy. Um, perhaps in around 2019, if you're walking down Sukhumvit Road in Bangkok, you'll have seen one of his businesses. Perhaps you've even been there, and it's not a bar on Sukhumvit Road, but it's, I suppose, well, you'll see, you'll see in the video. I'm not going to give it away, but it's a very interesting concept. And uh, yeah, so I'm happy to share a story. If you've been following this channel, you'll have seen that uh, back, back about maybe six, seven weeks ago, I did a video with Friso called Dying on the Streets of Bangkok. So that was just one aspect of Friso's life in that video. I'll leave a link for in the description if you haven't seen that one. But anyway, without further ado, let's go meet him. Oh, before I do that, progress report here. Look at this. You got a table here in, in the shot, right? So we got a new table here. Uh, I'm gonna build this in to a little studio here and I'm gonna bring people in and interview them here. I'm gonna put some curtains around it and put some lights around it and maybe I'm looking at getting a painting commissioned. Sounds very posh when I say that. I'm getting a painting commissioned. <laughs> yeah, so that is the story. Um, do me a favor, if you liked the video, hit the like button and leave me a comment. And if you can, share the video as well. It does help me out, help this channel out. Without further ado, Let's go me Friso. Cheers. All right, Friso, how you doing? You're sitting in Bangkok. There's a beautiful view behind you. It's bringing back a lot of memories of my life, what I've left. I am jealous. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Very, very happy to talk to you. Happy to see you and happy to see you. You're doing well over there. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm happy. I'm, I'm living and uh, life is a journey, as they say. And we're going to get into your journey today, right? So um, you came to Thailand at 19 years old with 574 euro to your name. That's about $600. Tell us that story. Um, you know, it's, 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 it, we got to go a little bit back because I, the first time I came to Thailand, I was, I think I must have been 11 or 12 years old. So I grew up in a small village in the Netherlands and my best friend, which is basically my brother, we grew up together. We were in, uh, we were in primary school, middle school, all the way. Um, we were together always and he's half Thai. So his mom is Thai, his father is Dutch. So Thailand was always, it was always in my life somehow, you know, of course, when I went to his house, his mom would like cook Thai food and she was watching movies and it was all very interesting. And then, well, when I was, I think 11, she said, Hey, you're old enough now. You're going to go with us to Thailand. And I was like, wow. Okay. That's cool. So they said, okay, let's go and ask your parents if they're okay. And of course they were. And off we went. So we went to Thailand on holiday and it was not like the, the, you know, the sort of standard holiday because we were with his family all the time. So we were traveling around to all these different places with his family. So very sort of local. And yeah, that's how sort of, you know, the love, the, the Thailand bug came to be. And, you know, we came back every second year on another holiday. And, you know, of course I was still a kid. I mean, I was in school. So, you know, the ideas already started coming, like, what if I would live there one day? And then I graduated. And 10 days later, I was 19. I said, I'm leaving. And then I moved and I, well, you know, I go back on holidays, of course, but this, I've been here. Yeah. So. So that's that 12 years, 11, 12 years. And what did your parents say when you were going to leave? <laughs> Well, you know, of course they, they were sad, but they knew already, they knew because, you know, because of that young age and Thailand was really a thing for me. And, you know, it was very, 
Um, you know, I was always talking about it and reading about it. And, you know, so they knew like, okay, there's, you know, his, his heart might be there. So they, it wasn't a surprise and they just said, go, go for it. My parents, I'm very lucky that they are always been like that. Like, just go follow your heart, follow your dreams. So that was really great. And they love to come here. So they come on holidays and we go all around Thailand and they really love it. So that's, uh, that, that's very good. And did you know at 19 that it was going to be a long, you were going to spend a long time away? Because I knew when I was leaving at 23, I don't know what it is, but I just knew within my first week of being in Thailand, I just said, oh my God, I'm probably here for a long time. Did you know? Did you get that feeling? Yes, yes, yes. For me, it really felt like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there and I'm just going to make it work. I want to be here. I want to stay here. So this is it, you know, and I I was able to do an internship when I was, I studied film. So I was working in a video production company. So that was um, during still my my school. So I had like a three, four month sort of repetition where I could see like, okay, is this really going to work out? And then I knew, of course, after that internship, I know, okay, this is it. So that's why I moved so quickly back. And yeah, it's never been an option for me like oh i might go back at some point it's always just been okay let's just make it work here because this is here this is my home this is my life um so so yeah and it and it and it kind of worked out so when you've got a really interesting background let's talk about your businesses right so you've had a number of different right. businesses in thailand so let's start right back you're 19 you're you, you start working like what are you doing yeah, so I I I, uh, I did the internship uh, with a video production company, and I was fortunate enough that um, they wanted to hire me. So I had to go back to graduate, uh, and they said, okay, well, you know, if you want to come back, we offer you a job. Then there was another company, a Dutch company uh, up in Chiang Mai, that also said they saw me because I was like writing blogs about like my life here, you know, during the internship. And they hired me to do a, a, a video job for them as well. And I did that and they were very happy. And they also offered me a job. So they said, okay, you know, come and work. So that was good. So I chose to go and live in Chiang Mai. That wasn't very long. That was maybe seven, eight months. And, and the company wasn't doing so well. But it was a good, a good start, you know, to kind of, you know, ground a little bit. And then um, I decided to to quit and move to Bangkok. And that's when I started to, you know, to tip my toes into business. Um, and that kind of changed the whole course of, you know, my, my, the rest of my life. Well, let's get into your businesses. What was your first one? So, well, when I moved to Bangkok, I met my, 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 uh, at that time, business partner, Swedish guy. And he had an idea. He told me he wanted to map out all of Bangkok online. And this is, you know, this is 10 years ago. So this is before, kind of before Facebook, you know, so it was like his, his, his vision was, okay, let's bring, it's called Bangkok nightlife. So let's bring everything related to Bangkok nightlife on one platform because so people could see where can I go and eat? Where can I party? Where can I, you know, find a discount, all this stuff. So um, I said, wow, that's an amazing idea. I love it. And then, the idea became to do that in video. And of course my background was video, right? So I remember him showing me a video of like a very, very crappy video of a crappy bar. And he said, like, can we do something like this? And I said, oh, we can do much better. So then we said, okay, so let's go. So we mapped out, I think we did seven or 800 videos in the course of six months, which was basically us, you know, at night we would just pack our bags and we would walk. Sukhumvit so 1, Sukhumvit so 2, Sukhumvit so 3, and we would go all the way and do every venue that was along that street. Um, and that's how we mapped out basically the city, and it worked, and people loved it, and they used it. And, and did, you, did you upload these videos on your own website, or where did these videos go? No, they were on YouTube, yeah. So people can actually still see it, and they're still there, Bank of Nightlife. And, you know, it was... It was a different time. Video was still a little bit of a magical thing. Like everybody wanted to do video, but it was not that easy. You know, now it's like, when, you know, you run around with an iPhone and, it, you know, at least you get quality and everything was a bit more accessible. So um, because my background was in film, I, I graduated as cinematographer. 
we did these videos very cinematic, almost like a little, little, little 20, 25 second movie, like you would see now. But 10 years ago, uh, people were just kind of amazed by that. And we did it for free as well. So we supplied 800 free videos to the whole Bank of Nightlife scene. Uh, and 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 people really, you know, they they, they love the videos and they like the whole concept. So, and how did you make money off it? Was it advertising, or where's the income income coming from? Well, that's that's the interesting thing. So, the first business lesson I learned there was that sometimes the vision or the passion can take over, right? So, you we were so focused on building the biggest, most beautiful nightlife platform there is, and we didn't think so much about sort of the the monetization side of it. There was also no like YouTube monetization, all that stuff didn't exist. So um, that came later because, you know, that sort of goes into the second business because we did 800 videos. Very soon, people started picking up the phone and started calling. Like, you know, we did a video for the Hilton and they called, hey, you did this video. Very, very nice. We love it. But, you know, we want it to be a minute. And then, of course, for us, it clicked. Ah, okay. So now we have customers that need videos. And then uh, we founded uh, my creative agency, Digital Distinct. And that company still exists today. So tell us about Digital Distinct, because you do have a YouTube channel as well. It's a small one, but you've got some great videos yeah. there. I, lo I looked at it earlier because I remember I met you back. We met in June, I think, 22. And you told yeah. me like about this. And I was like, well, uh, and I looked at your Instagram and you've got some good videos on the Instagram, but I said, well, a cinem cinematographer, I wonder what kind of content then about an hour ago, I just looked um, on cool. your, on YouTube and I found the channel and it's like some really good edits. So I was thinking, okay, yeah. you must have had a proper, I mean, you've got the skills, but what's the, what was the business behind it? Yeah. So it, it, it was exactly that. So, you know, it was like now, because we did so much, we were well known in the city for, you know, these two guys that are pumping out very beautiful videos. And so people started calling and, you know, hotels, restaurants, schools, companies. And, you know, so we, you know, it, it grew by itself. And, um, and that company was very small in the beginning. Again, it was just me and my partner and we would do everything by ourselves. But of course, as you know, a company usually grows. At some point, you start hiring people that do it much better than you. Uh, you know, you get some people on sale. So we build this to, I think, up behind maybe 25, 30 staff, you know, editors, designers, everything. So it was it, it was super fun because, you know, his my 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 business partner, his his uh, background is acting. Mine is film. So that obviously paired very well. And we. We did a lot of really fun stuff, you know, always being creative. So it was it was a very cool time. The company still exists. It's just that we, you know, I don't have much time. He doesn't. So it's a little bit on the back burner. But, you know, once in a while, when a nice project comes, we're like, okay, let's give it a go. <laughs> so then what was the next thing you did? So then we dived into e-commerce. We built a company called Epic Stuff which was um, lifestyle products that we, you know, we sold in Thailand, basically. So it's like gadgets, posters, wall art, like stuff for in your home. For the Thai market or international market? Thai market, Thai market, yeah. Okay. Yes. So it was very much based on the concept, like, you know how it is that someone has his birthday and, you know, usually you didn't buy on time. And you don't know what to buy, right? So we thought, okay, let's fill that gap by just creating a site where there's a lot of great, fun stuff to buy, categorize, you know, okay, you know, it's the birthday of my sister or of my boyfriend or whatever. Uh, and then we did something that nobody uh, did at that time. And that was two hour delivery. So this again is before Lazada, before Shopee. So we would send bikes around town and deliver this. And this, this, uh, sort of proved to be quite a winner because a lot of people, you know, it's like, oh, it's a birthday at 7 p.m. I don't have anything. Epic stuff. So then they went and 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 bought that. So it was uh, I'd again, be one of your customers of then. That could be me. Oh, I forgot yeah. someone's birthday. Oh quick, I get better get something. <laughs> all the time. All the but time. But anyway, <laughs> listen, I remember in 2019, I think it was, I was walking down Sukhumvit Road. Okay. Yeah. And I remember looking up and seeing this big mm. crane. Right, 
this massive crane yeah. and there was yeah. a table yeah. dangling <laughs> from this crane i was like what is yeah. this what's going on here and then i found out then it's it's, it's called dinner in the sky was it yeah so it, was, it was called dinner in the sky yeah yeah tell us about that because that's your business yes yes yeah this was um yeah exactly how you described it so i mean it's a uh, table 24 seats uh roller coaster chairs a 200 ton construction crane that you know hooks on the table and lifts you up 50 meter in the air and you have a four or five course dinner hanging in the sky in the middle of bangkok so yeah um you can imagine how you know how how much fun that was and you know this is something really that it does i think out of you know 100 people that i meet if i would all tell them about dinner in the sky 99 people know about this because there is no better way to market something than just hang it up in the middle of the city for everybody to see right so it was really it was such a great experience really how did you start that like what, what was the concept what, what made you decide okay i'm going to put a crane here in the middle of bangkok and dangle tourists off from a dinner table off this crane yeah yeah, yeah. no it's, it's it's you know on paper it sounds insane well i mean it's a it's a uh, company that exists and it's it's from belgium so thailand was country 45 so it's all around the world and we saw this in malaysia and we were like okay if we bring this to bangkok this will be you know it will be insane because of course you know i mean people here are always looking for something fun and something new so we booked the first flight to kl and met uh met with with the people there that were running it there and um we bought the license for thailand we said okay let's do this and um we um yeah we 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 set it up which was not easy i mean you can imagine you go into a government office and you say hello everybody we um you know we want to pull 24 people up with a construction crane 50 meters in the air for them to have dinner and you know there's nothing under you you know they look just looked at us say you guys are crazy you know it's it's, it's it will never happen so it was it was a big struggle to convince everybody that this that this would actually work um so really really a lot of you know strings needed to be pulled a lot of really hard effort but we got it done and we were the first to ever got it done in thailand and there have been eight groups companies that tried it before nobody succeeded but we did it so. what made you successful what if i could say like what was your what what made you different to your competitors mm, i think first of all you know, if a competitor or, you know, was like from abroad and they would come to Thailand and they would say, you know, like, like we ran into, you know, like government and, you know, officials would just say, guys, this is, you know, this is, this, this is very difficult to, you know, get your permits for and all that stuff. Whilst maybe in the country they were from, you know, if it's all by the law and by the book, they would just sign it off and it's done. Right. As you know, in Thailand, it needs a little bit more uh creativity and you need to you know you need to 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 walk around the how do you dance around the bush a bit right i, I don't know if that's a, it's a good expression but it works very different so and you see that with a lot of companies even big companies that you know want to put like you know put 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 their business here they get scared away because it's just doesn't work the same way that they are used to and if i asked you you know and for advice for people because you've obviously been quite successful and you've been very flexible and creative so far in your life any business advice for anyone that's watching this now that thinks oh we're going to go over to thailand and start a business or maybe they're in thailand they want to start a business well i would first of all i would always advise to to to, to go for it and i think that's the the beauty of thailand so in reverse because you know we just spoke about it can be very hard to get certain things done but on the other way it can also be very easy so if you want to start a business if you have an idea in thailand you're just able to do it you can just start i have an idea i start tomorrow and then on the way you can kind of figure out you know okay so what do i need to do what needs to be in place so i think it's a very good climate in that way because you can float an idea and bring it you know to market test it out and see you know is there a good response and if there is then you can sort of after the fact 
you know, fix some stuff that you might have not done from the get go, which again, with maybe in other countries, you would need everything to be in place before you can start, which makes it a very heavy uh, operation from the get go, right? Whilst here you can, it's, it's easy to start. And I think it's a good climate for business. Thai are very entrepreneurial on, you know, small level, you know, look at everybody on the streets selling stuff and how you see you know everybody's selling things online i mean it's beautiful everybody has this in them so you know my advice would just to, to keep it very lean keep it lean try it out bring it to market see if it works if it does think about scaling don't make it too heavy i want to talk about your life in thailand right so okay you sure. blew me away back in june we shot a video together um I think a lot of people might have seen it. If you haven't, I'll leave a link in the description for it. But in that video, you spoke Thai a lot. And your Thai is absolutely crisp, perfect, fluent. <laughs> it's, 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 ev it's, your accent is, is spot on. Uh, it's perfect, right? Uh, tell us. Right. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'm going to add in a clip. So here's a clip of Frizo speaking Thai. แล้วทําไมถึงเขาอยู่ที่นี่เพราะว่าบางคนก็มีบ้านบางคนก็ไม่มีบ้านคนรถเล่ไปในจอนก็มีครับมีคนตกงานใช่มั้ยฮะใช
yeah, is 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 really great, and I and I, and I really I'm I'm really happy with that. And it's 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 also culture, right? I mean, language is one thing. If I'm you know, there's a hundred ways in our in Thai to ask something. And it depends culturally who you're with, you know, what the situation is, you know, how you how you approach that person. And if you start to understand the way Thai do that, and you do that the same way, it connects immediately like this. Because now there are no barriers anymore. Now it's Thai versus Thai, although my face is not Thai, you know what I mean? So it's 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 culturally very very, and it's very intricate. It's very very that takes a long time to understand. And of course, for me, that will be a journey for my whole life. But I think that's where it is. It's then you know. So listen, if you listen to a lot of people speak, you can start to pick up the patterns, you know, and you know when to joke, what to say, how to joke, you know, how to call someone, how to ask it in a way that it makes sense in that. Uh, current setting. I mean, it, it it's pretty complex. Um, but if you if you master that or if you nail that, I think then you can come very close to feeling a part of, you know, the group, society, the the the, the people. It's a bit of a strange question, right? But you have <laughs> you have. I mean, it's, well, it's not a sta- it's not a question; it's a statement. You have unusual eating habits, right? So you told me back in June that you were a, a lot heavier before a couple of years ago, and then you um, started eating differently, and then you lost a load of weight. Because I remember when we were out for a whole yeah. day, it was I met you at like <laughs> nine a.m. till six p.m., and you didn't eat anything all day, right. and I was shocked. That's and you were true. moving around all day, and I said, like. Do you not take a break? Do you not have some lunch? Like, what, what haven't you eaten anything? So, yeah, what's the story yeah. there? It's uh, it's called intermittent fasting, and I think it's 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 a lifestyle, and it's it's really great. I mean, I've been doing it for many years. Like you say, I was uh, very overweight. I've been all my life, uh, and at some point, I said, okay, this has to change. And diet is well, it's seventy percent, eighty percent in you know what you take in, right, food wise. So. You know, I, I I learned about this and uh, it became a lifestyle. And at some point you get very used to that. So there are certain windows a day you eat and then there's a long window that you don't eat. And um, it's very beneficial for many things, um, you know, longevity of life, your organs, your focus, all, all of that. So, you know, I almost can't imagine having a breakfast because I almost fall asleep right after. So uh yeah so when do you eat then uh dinner dinner i eat a bit more now because i i'm I'm working out or i'm trying to to pack some some muscle so now i i have to eat more but other otherwise it would be only evening say 6 p.m to 9 p.m i would fast um well 20 21 hours and eat three hours which is quite extreme i wouldn't recommend normally it's eight oh sorry 18 six do you, do you not feel hungry? No, no, no. Your body is very capable of, you know, of, you know, taking energy from, you know, not only from, you know, quick carbs and all of that. And when I was losing weight, my body was eating itself up. So it was using, you know, the belly to push me forward. And that's exactly what you want, right? You want to burn fat. So you tell your body, there's nothing here only your fat reserves so your body starts to burn this fat reserve and well you um, do, do you take electrolytes become... during the day or do you just drink water or what do you drink drink, drink a lot of water water coffee yeah yes what but about a couple know, of beers don't... would you have a couple of beers yes yes i just uh, i did the dry month um uh, but now i'm back in the game so uh yeah <laughs> i love you know i mean back in the <laughs> game yeah, we do a lot of like dinners here at home, invite a lot of friends, and we cook and we have wine and all this. Uh, no, of course, and we got to. But you're breaking your water. fasting then because there's loads of calories in beer. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, luckily these days it's kind of under control, you know. So it's better. I, I, my, my, my weight situation. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Let's go back into what you're doing now, right? Because. You're doing yeah. some really good stuff with Bangkok Community Help Foundation. Tell us, how did that start? Yeah, so Bangkok Community Help Foundation, 
started um, when COVID came first first to Thailand. So this is April, I must say that correct, 2019 or 2020. Um, yeah, 2020. And, yeah, right. So, you know, of course, we kind of, you know, nobody knew what it was. I mean, it was this Wuhan virus. And the only thing that, you know, I saw together with, with some friends is like, okay, you know, the country is going to close and that's going to have such a profound impact on the economy here. Of course, we were in tourism as well with, with dinner in the sky, right? So we understood like, okay, this is going to end bad. So we said, okay, let's, let's get out there and help. So we started cooking meals and that was when I uh, met my current, well, you know, business foundation partner, Greg Lang. Um, because he runs Sunrise Tacos, and I called him and said, hey, I need a kitchen. And of course, he has 12 or 20 restaurants. So he said, I've borrowed mine. So that's when we met. And so we started to cook 300 meals. We went into uh, lower-income communities, handed it out. And that moment, we saw how bad it was. There were people crying. There were mothers crying with babies. It's like, we can't handle this anymore. Where do we find the income to survive? And then it really clicked for us, like, okay, we need to do more. Um, and then, so that kind of grew by itself. And, you know, fast forward to today, we did um, close to one and a half million meals, um, on 700,000 survival bags, which has food for a week, 100,000 COVID tests. We did a lot of stuff during the COVID period because COVID really dictated us to, to do it. Once COVID moved in a certain direction, we moved after it. And so kind of then let's, let's, so it became like that. And, you know, I never wish that COVID happened. Nobody would ever wish, but I'm very happy that it changed my life and that we were able to found the Bank Community Health Foundation with just really a lot of amazing stuff like you have seen and, you know, and yeah and what are the future plans like what what's going to happen like now that, that the pandemic is is finished like what's going what your future what's the future of Bangkok Community Health Foundation yeah that's that's I mean it, it's a lot of things but everything is 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 tied to uh long-term solutions of course when you know when you do meals um you do it today tomorrow you gotta go back right so there's no that's some that's needed and especially during covid that was very needed but it's not long term so it's kind of you know it's like teach the man how to fish instead of giving the fish right so we are changing our direction so we're very focused on education um with kids sports with kids uh we're building houses for families uh i think you've you've, you've seen one as well so you know we do uh, com community a community renovation community improvement we're building a job platform where we're connecting people from lower income communities to, well, the outside world, basically, because there's so many very skilled people there that just do not have the, the tools or the know-how to, you know, connect to, well, you know, the market, people that need service. So that's something we're doing. Um, so everything that can be long-term and that can, you know, can develop people into, you know, hopefully being able to you know improve their lives and you know the lives of their families and their community and if people are watching this now and they want to help out what yeah. can they do how can they do it so you know first of all everybody can help out so at banco community help we really lower the threshold to anybody can join at any time because I think everybody wants to help, but it's people don't really know how, right? It's like, okay, what should I do? Where should I go? What should I buy? With us, everybody is welcome. You can follow and check us out, Banco Community Health Foundation, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, everywhere, YouTube, and there you see what we do. And then you can just send us a message and say, hey guys, I want to come along. We do a lot of community renovation where we go and paint. Uh, we help the homeless every day seven days a week. This was also in your video. Uh, so we always need help there to come and prepare the food. Then we go with our van to the Democracy Monument. We hand out the food to, um, you know, four or 500 homeless people and elderly per day. I can vouch for, for what you're, the work you're doing because we, I mean, we spent a day together filming and I only used probably 50% of that material. There was a whole chunk of that when we went to um, Klong Toy and there was a, 
you were building a, a home for a family, you know? So it, it's legit. The work you're doing is great. It's completely, it's very, it's a very worthy cause. And I'm not, we're not just here to like give us your money, but if you are, if you have some money, it just, if you, if you, if you would like to help some poor people in Thailand, I'll leave a link in the description, but like, the aim of this interview was to talk to free. So it wasn't like a plug to try it for a charity or anything like that. But, you know, if you can. Absolutely. No, you're hundred percent right. Really. And it's, you know, and if you, you know, if people go on, uh, on Facebook and share one of our posts, you have already helped because I mean, you know, it's just spread the word. And if you want to get involved, you get involved. And if you don't, you don't, I mean, it, you know, it's just like we are there and you can always join. And it is, a family. I mean, we're Bangkok Community Health Community. We help communities, but we are a community as well. Five hundred volunteers and growing every day. So you meet a lot of great people from all over the world, all with the same mindset. We want to help someone else. So it's a great group of people, and we do a lot of great stuff. And you know, again, we talked about being part of society. Um, and some people might feel they are not. I really advise them come with us and 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 dip your toes into you know, this kind of work, this kind of, you know, experiences, because this will bring you close to the real Thailand and, you know, what's really up and down in a city like Bangkok, you know. All right, we're free, so we'll leave it there. I yeah, wish you the best appreciate it. Thanks very much. Man, thank you so much. Yeah, it was an honor. Thank you. Thanks very much. So I'll do the old plug now. If you like that video, leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel. And hit that like button. Frizo, you're a legend. Thanks for letting me see the Bangkok sunset. And I wish you all the best. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's completely dark now. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Take care, see mate. You. See you later. Bye, bye, bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.